welcome you to the Way of Meditation service here at the Agape International Spiritual Center. I'm Reverend Julie Moret. It's an honor to welcome you to our Way of Meditation service. The selected reading is taken from Spiritual Liberation by Michael Bernard Beckwith. The following can be found on page 39 and is taken from chapter 4. The universe is forever sending out a casting call to us to accept our starring role in an A-list movie. Stepping out of the movie reel version of our life and accepting the real role of who and what we are, our authentic self. As we sit in our inner screening room, observing the moment to moment changing scenery of our life, we may wonder what indeed is the part we have come to play on this great stage of life. Our spiritual technology is advanced enough to edit our current points of view, to cut our illusions about what is real, and to leave them on the cutting room floor of consciousness. Most people do not experience reality, but rather their thoughts about reality. However, our thinking about reality does not put us in touch with the real. Reality enters our awareness when we awaken to our authentic self. When authenticity itself speaks through our words, thinks through our thoughts, walks through our feet, serves through our hands, and loves through our hearts, our lives have become real. So I invite you to join in a moment of prayer. You can close your eyes if that's comfortable if you're not driving or operating any equipment. Take a nice, full, easy breath. I'm so grateful to stop in this moment to become wide open and available. I'm so grateful in this moment for this beautiful way of meditation service, this invitation to come face to face with our most true self. And so I give special thanks and gratitude for all of life that colludes us around us in this moment, for all of life that is supporting us in this moment. I'm so grateful for this heightened frequency of consciousness with gatherers from all around the world, all across the United States. I'm so grateful for our wise ones and our ancestors and a lineage that we come from, that supports us, that holds us up, that guides our way. I'm so grateful to know in this moment as we gather together for this way of meditation service that we're so well held by life itself, by all of life, from the stone people and the plant people and the four-legged and the two-legged and the creepy crawlers and the fend and the furred and the wigan wads. All of life is cheering us on this day. Reveal thyself. Know thyself. And so I give great great thanks and I bless this this time of meditation. I bless Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith. I bless the joy of him. I bless the light of him. I bless the wisdom of him and the way in which he shares it and imparts it. I bless the Agape International Spiritual Center. So grateful, so thankful. And I simply know that this time is a healing balm to our souls. It's a nurturance. It's an awakening. And it is very good. And I allow it to be saying, and so it is. Amen. I invite you to enjoy this reverential tone, and we'll begin with our meditation time shortly. Another good morning to you, Agape Nation. As you have felt the the vibration of the sacred reading, the wonderful evocation for this service, you've heard the words to encounter or to come in contact with our higher self. This is the higher purpose of the art and the science of meditation. It's one thing to know about the higher self. It's one thing to know about the presence of God. It's one thing to know about love and peace and harmony. It's one thing to know about beauty. It's one thing to know about joy. It's one thing to to study these things in in an abstract way. 
But meditation allows you to go beyond knowing about something and memorizing those particular facts and statistics about meditation. As you enter into the practice of meditation, you're making yourself a prime candidate for an insight so that you actually come to really know, not just believe in, not just know about, but you come to know the presence. You come to know your higher self. Just as the analogy, you know, it's a wonderful thing to know about the continent of Africa and all of the, the many countries that are in Africa. The fact that it's the biggest landmass in the world. It's good to know about that. But unless you actually travel there or travel to China or Japan or Australia or Canada and actually participate with the culture and the people and the food, it's all abstract. So we move from abstract to real with the practice of meditation. And as we do this on a continual basis, with sincerity, with regularity, we go through changes. We go through the changes of releasing toxicity, toxic thoughts, misperceptions about life, misperceptions about life that produce experience, misperceptions about life that produce experience that we begin to believe are true. In other words, so many people have been inundated with perceptions about life, about other people, about the world, and then they experience those perceptions, and they believe that what they are experiencing is real. You are more than an experiential being. Yes, you experience your thought forms. You experience your perceptions. But what if those perceptions and thought forms aren't true, meaning they're not, they're not eternal, they're not forever? What if you have a perception that life is hard until you die? What if you have a perception that we live in a world of scarcity? What if you have a, a perception that there's not enough good to go around? Then what happens is you, that gets triggered within you and you begin to produce a toxic thought around that and a perception that there's not enough, you begin to become very, perhaps, ambitious, you become very nervous or anxious about the world, all based on a perception. Now, the truth teaching, and which is integrated with quantum reality, lets us know that we live in a field of abundance, as an example, energy that's never depleted, transmutes itself forever and forever and forever, never depletes itself, never creates itself. There's, there's no lack anywhere. That's a truth in mystical spirituality, and that is a truth in quantum mechanics. But individuals don't experience that necessarily because they're experiencing their perception of lack and limitation. So experience is sometimes overrated. And so we want to have an encounter with a presence that detoxes the thought patterns of separation from the presence, thought patterns of lack and limitation, thought patterns of not enoughness, thought patterns that we're not enough, we're not good enough, we're not worthy. And so the changes you go through is one, the releasing of toxicity, toxic thoughts, thoughts and perceptions that aren't eternally true. And then we go through the changes of being a candidate for rich insights into reality. That is, without a process of reasoning, we sit and sometimes suddenly or incrementally an insight broods within us. We begin to see not with the eyes, mind you. We begin to hear the eternal broadcast, not with ears, mind you. The presence of love and of beauty and intelligence that becomes more real than the very chairs you're sitting on, more real than your previous experience of life. It's an aha moment. It's wow, before I was blind, but now I see. You are preparing yourself as you practice on a regular basis 
for that kind of rich insight. And then what happens? The ramifications of that insight changes the trajectory of your life experience. Whereas before, you may have been building your, your house on the rocky soil of a misperception of lack and limitation, scarcity, not enoughness, lack of self-worth, lack of self-confidence, etc. Now, with the insight into your real nature and being, an insight into reality, the trajectory of your life changes because now you're building your house. Your house is your consciousness. You're building your consciousness on the truth, on the, the bedrock of love and of beauty and intelligence. And your experience begins to change. The, the, the trajectory begins to change. Something, it's sometimes called a healing. A healing, as we teach, is a revelation. It is a revealing of the intrinsic wholeness that's already within you. It's not adding anything to you. It is the elimination of thought forms, elimination of perceptions. The same thing with the body temple. If your body temple is to be healed, then there must be the elimination of toxicity. Once toxicity is gone and there's proper nutrition and hydration, the body can heal. But as long as there's toxicity, then it becomes very difficult for the body to heal itself because it's always dealing with the toxicity. And so oftentimes in our culture, we treat things and we treat symptoms, but we never get rid of the toxicity of the body, you see. Same thing with the mind. You know, we, we can cover it up with um, behavioral modification and things of that particular nature, but unless our perception changes and we begin to see that which is real, then we're just covering up stuff and treating symptoms. So once you have an insight, it changes the trajectory of your life. And then what happens? Your perception expands and the thoughts that are obtained with the larger perception are different than the thoughts that are obtained from a limited perception. In other words, you are not merely a thinker of thoughts. You obtain thoughts in your awareness. You either obtain thoughts from the sea of mental garbage, lack, limitation, separation, thought forms that spin out from that, or you are obtaining thoughts uh, from the mind of the infinite that's called inspiration. So you're either catching inspiration and creativity or you're catching the thought forms from the sea of mental garbage based on your belief, based on your perception. So as I was saying, you're sitting in meditation, toxicity is being released, and you're preparing yourself for a rich insight. Now here's the deal about insight. It is very difficult to unsee what you've seen. Once you catch it, oh my God, I'm all right. There's, there's nothing wrong with me. Oh my God, all those labels that have been placed on me by society, by other people that I've been living, that's not really me, you see. The greatest weight that you'll ever drop is the weight of other people's opinions about you, you see. And you begin to see, wow, that, that's, that's not me. That perception is not me. That opinion is not me. Who is me? itself as me. I'm so grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to exist. I am the personification of life. I'm the personification of the presence that's never an absence. And so you go through the cycles of detoxification, insight, detoxification, insight, detoxification, insight. And after a while, you stop making a federal case about your detoxification. In the beginning, it's like, oh, I'm going through my, I'm going through stuff, I'm going through stuff, oh, everything's up for me. You know, in the beginning, you, you become aware of, your, of the emotions that are coming up, particularly if you've atrophied your emotions, and you become aware of the emotionality, become aware of the stuff coming up. It's a really big deal. Then after a while, it's like, eh, going through stuff. 
It's just part of the process. I'm detoxing something. It's an insight. After a while, there's like a laser-like joy. You may not be walking around smiling all the time or being very exuberant. You might at times, but there's an inner joy, like a laser-like. You're just, you're just aware of a joy that doesn't come from the world. It doesn't come from people's opinions about you. It doesn't come. It's emanating from the depth of your being. And the world can't steal it because the world didn't give it to you. And you walk with that. And it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger as you continue to have a practice. The encouragement of this community, whether it's the way of meditation service, whether it's our daily prayers and the meditation times, whether it is the classes through our university, whether it is the Sunday presentations and transmissions, whether it is the prayer ministry, whether it is our one from the heart teams that are holding people in prayer and visiting people in the hospital. Ultimately, it is to bring you to you, to have some level of practice so that what might look like to you, little by little by little by little, you're growing into a greater awareness of yourself. But catch this, the presence doesn't know quantity because it's everywhere and it's the only game in town. It knows quality. So with every, what you might think is a little tiny insight is big in shifting the trajectory of your life. Let's practice. As you've been tuning in for perhaps this month, or if not, you're aware that you, you are aware now that you are the, the, the sacred music that you're listening to is from the Soak Technology, S O A A K. And these are clinically tested frequencies that actually assist you in dissolving uh, thought forms of depression, anxiety, and expanding your awareness, assisting you in expanding your awareness to a rich insight into your oneness and unity with the presence that's never an absence. So that's the, the sound that we're being immersed in. We're being immersed in that sound. We're being immersed in the vibration of the sacred reading and the prayer you heard this morning. We're being immersed in the intentionality that brought you here. We're being immersed in the, the sacred order of the practitioners that are online with us, holding us as a community in prayer. We're being immersed now in the gratitude of all of the thousands of people that are tuning in that are creating a rich field of connectivity and availability and intentionality to have a realization of our oneness with God. All of this is, is happening right now in this sacred way of meditation service. And so we sit with our back erect, not rigid, just erect, so just for a second, just take your shoulders and take them to your ears and squeeze every single thing of your body, temple, so you can do the opposite of what you want. Do the opposite, squeeze everything, your face, squeeze everything. Ah, release. You may have even brokered a little smile on your face. Ah, so with this sense of relaxing and releasing yourself to these precious moments, we embrace our intentionality to have a realization of our oneness with life beyond conditions, beyond limited perception, our oneness with life, and that's a capital L life, which means the presence of God and love and beauty and intelligence. By whatever name we choose to call the presence, we are courting the presence. 
with an intention to realize our oneness with it. Hmm. And what's embracing this intention? Our attention. We're embracing our attention, intention, with our attention. What's assisting us and keeping us present? Our sacred breath. So we are aware of our intention to realize our oneness with the presence of love and beauty and intelligence, life itself. And we are aware that the body is breathing and it's not breathing in the future, it's breathing right now, it's not breathing in the past, it's presently breathing so we're right here with it ah. with a slight smile on the face we become so available to catching the eternal broadcast with a lowly listening beyond the ear a divine seeing beyond the eye as if someone were about to tell us something extremely important and our whole being is, is available to see and to hear it. And with a beginner's mind, we sit with the awareness that this is the first time we've ever practiced the art and the science of meditation paying undistractable attention to that which is real. Your hands are perhaps in your lap facing upward as a sign of receptivity. The thumb and forefinger may be touching as a sign today of transcending limited egoic perception.
practicing stillness, quietude, sacred silence, solitude of the soul. You've heard the statement over the years that he or she are they that can perfectly practice inaction. To them, all things are possible. Perfect inaction, perfect stillness allows for that which the world calls impossible to be made possible. Out of no thing, everything emerges. Be still and know that I am God in the midst of you, says the Lord of hosts, the great God of the universe, in you.
drift has occurred mentally. You've gotten caught in thought forms or emotions or body sensations. It's all right. Come back to the breath. Embrace your vibration of your intention and begin again. Over and over and over again. Having dominion over your attention. Being available. The clearing and the rich insight into your real nature. Your true nature, your eternal nature. The presence that's never an absence. Becoming more real every breath. Take a deep inhalation, release with the sound of ah, and allow yourself to be embedded in gratitude 
surrounded by gratitude, immersed in gratitude, embraced by gratitude, and emanating gratitude from the very depth of your being. Feel grateful for anything or nothing at all. Soak it up. And in this consciousness of gratitude, we're allowing our perceptual windows to be clean and cleared that we may see that we are surrounded by a presence, immersed in a presence, loved by a presence, and the presence is our very life and being. And as we're recognizing this with every breath that we take, there's a deeper and deeper awareness of our oneness with the presence. Unity, oneness, unity, oneness, unity, oneness. Oneness with the allness. And that the very word that is being spoken right now is the vibrational word of oneness for each and every being tuning in right now. The divine freedom reigns supreme. Not only a freedom from fear and lack and limitation, but a freedom to express ourselves fully and completely. Divine health well-being, wellness, dynamic peace of mind, a, a real sense of connectivity with the presence that's never an absence, a real feeling tone of all of our needs being met. Wisdom and guidance moving through us in a language and in a way that we can understand and act upon. Safety, which is a state of consciousness, mind you. It doesn't come from the externals. Ultimately, it is our state of consciousness. That deep, pure sense of safety and well-being. Now being augmented and amplified by our intention and ultimate catching this in consciousness. This is the word that's being spoken. And I feel it in my bones, in my soul, and I give thanks for it. I name our time together, beautiful and wonderful. And as we set ourselves free from any sense of limitation and give thanks that it is so. And so it is. Amen. Amen. And Ashe. Shalom. Salam. Hallelujah. As you slowly open your eyes, mentally see all the beings around the world who are with us, and say to yourself or out loud, now, so be it. So be this vibration. And so it is. Thank you for joining with us today in this way of meditation service. Thank you for being a vibrational part of the Agape International Spiritual Center. And thank you in advance for your generosity, your donations, your gifts, your offerings. Thank you. This is our time to support our community and the ministries and programs and all that goes on here, the infrastructure. We turn within and we give thanks for what we have to give. We bless it. We dedicate it to the knowing of the sacred truth of our own being that makes us free. And we allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. The veterans to the community, thank you so much for your consistent generosity that allows us to be here on a regular basis. Thank you for, for all of that. You already know how to give. Many of you are on the auto tithe program. Many of you have have a text to donate and you've selected the aspect of the text to donate that gives on a regular basis. That's so very helpful where our, our budget is concerned. Thank you for doing that. For those of you who are just joining us in the giving habit, you may begin by texting to donate. You take your phone and you text the word give to 
321-6243. It's right here on your screen. You choose the amount and your regularity of your gifting. Thank you for doing that. If you want to give on our website, perhaps you're on our YouTube channel right now, or perhaps you're on Facebook, um, or maybe already on the website, agapelive.com. Donation button is right there on the banner, and you may give that way. You may mail it in. We don't call it snail mail. We call it the real mail that arrives right on time every time. Make your checks and money orders out to Agape International and send it to 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, California, 90211. You can mail it in now. Or, like I said, if you go to our Facebook or my Facebook, there's a donation button there. The website, there's a donation button there. Those are the ways that you can give. So expand your consciousness of having all of your needs met by becoming a giver. That's how you prime the pump by practicing the law of circulation. So it's not, you're not just supporting agape in your giving, but you're supporting your own mental neurons and your own awareness that you have something to give. And when you believe and feel you have something, then more comes for you to give. It's the law. Begin to practice it right now. Thank you in advance. We're going to call forth the Reverend Julie Moret to highlight some of the wonderful things happening in our community. Thank you, and good morning again. To sign up or get more information about any of the items mentioned, visit agapelive.com, and all times mentioned are Pacific Daylight Time. Join us as we kick off Agape's 35th anniversary. Next Sunday, November 7th, Reverend Michael will host our special guest speaker, Neil Donald Walsh, the author of the acclaimed series, Conversations with God, and he's going to speak on calling all idea heroes. Reverend Michael will, join, will facilitate the way of meditation service at 645, and then he'll host Neil Donald Walsh for the other two services. So join us at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. Elevate your mental, emotional, and physical states and shift into vibrational alignment with Soak Sound Frequency Therapy, a healing protocol that pairs positive informations, affirmations with specific sound frequencies to provide energetic and cellular alignment. The Soak protocol is clinically proven to improve your health, boost your mood, help you sleep, and reduce anxiety and depression. When you sign up at the premium membership level, you'll get a 70% discount off of the first month, plus access to Reverend Michael's new 21-day program, The Art of Letting Go, by using the code AGAPE70. The cost for you will be $11 plus change, so go to SOAK.com, that's S-O-A-A-K.com, click on Premium Membership, and enter the code at AGAPE70. One of the things I love about it is, you know, it's easy to sign up for something and then kind of forget about it, but this sends you text messages throughout the day, so every time it pops up, I just play it. So I've got I go through the library and making breakfast or driving, I've got whatever, whatever I'm feeling like in that moment, and it's beautiful. Tina Gape meets online at 11.15 a.m. Click the Tina Gape banner on your website to register. Preteens ages 9 to 13 meet at 2 p.m. Children ages 3 to 8 meet at 3.30. Both are live on Zoom. To join and get your Agape Youth Fund Packs, email revleon at agapelive.com. The Crisis Support Clinic is open Mondays from 4 to 6 p.m. To receive Zoom information for details on your first-come, first-serve appointment, email crisissupport at agapelive.com, and each of these groups are offered on a love-offering basis. Monday through Saturday, we've got Face, on Facebook Live, we've got daily prayer at 8 a.m. and meditation at 12 noon. Hope to see you there. This Tuesday, Laughter Yoga meets on Zoom at 6 p.m., facilitated by our own practitioner, Martin Weech. Click the banner on our website to register, and no experience is necessary. Freedom Path Ministries Zooms this Wednesday at 5 p.m. Release any sense of addiction, old beliefs, or attachments. Click the Freedom Path banner on our website for information. This is a gift to the community, and all are welcome. Agape Spiritual Community Gatherings are every Friday at 5.30 p.m. You can meet and connect in community for an enriching, inspiring gathering led by our practitioners and ministers. Email scg at agapelive.com for more information. 
and save the date for an upcoming class, The Roots of Agape, with Reverend Cynthia Ambries. Take a transformational journey through the minds of New Thought luminaries. Explore the lives of Reverend Michael's influencers and contemporaries, and expand in the understanding of the core of Agape's unique teachings. This class meets five Tuesdays beginning November 18th at 6 p.m. It's open to everybody, and it is a required class for the practitioner pathway. Dance with the Rev, come on, get your endorphins flowing, shift your mood, show us your moves in a one minute video dancing during a Sunday service. Upload it on the banner on our website. You may see yourself hashtag dance with the Rev on social media and on Sundays. And finally for today, this is not an Agape event, however, it rocks and it emanates from Agape. It's one of our community partners founded by Agape practitioner Agape, uh, Akuyo Graham. Join Reverend Michael and others at this year's Voices of the Unheard as we celebrate the resiliency of our children and young people detained in the juvenile system. <coughs> Excuse me. An evening of spoken word and music to lift up the vibration of abused and neglected children throughout the LA County. Friday, November 5th at 7 p.m., a virtual celebration produced by Spirit Awakening Foundation on their website, Facebook, and YouTube channels, free to all. It's a lovely program. We look forward to seeing you there. Many blessings to you. Absolutely. I had the privilege of presenting uh, Akuyo Graham last night with the uh, Spirit of Service Award given by the, uh, uh, the, the, the Black Women's Lawyer Guild here in Los Angeles, California, for the great work that she's been doing. So the Voices of the Unheard is definitely something you want to tune into because Spirit Awakening that emanated from Agape is doing, uh, with Akuyo Graham, a powerful job for our youth that are in the uh, juvenile system that need to be seen for who they truly are spiritually and she does that so we turn within this moment and we give thanks for the great offerings the great donations the great gifts that are flowing in to agape right this moment to be transmuted into ministries and staff and equipment and new technologies and all manner of ways by which we are desiring to grow to be of greater service to humanity at this time in human history and beyond. We catch the feeling tone that all of our needs are met and we allow it to be so. And so it is. Amen. Once again, thank you for your generosity and your willingness to be a giver. As you stand up where you are, if you desire, we will hear one verse of this song. Second time it's played, you can sing it right where you are. We'll have our benediction. And then we'll see you at perhaps 8.30, 9 o'clock for the service, or 11 a.m. or 11.30 for service, Pacific time. Return. Hear that? Return. Return. We're returning to ourselves. Now we're going to hear it again with the Agape Ensemble, and you can sing with them if you desire. Return to me. Oh, with every breath. End and begin. With every breath. We give thanks to the great God of the universe that's everywhere present, that where we have been caught up in the tumble of the world, we've been pulled back to a divine remembrance that we are soulfully and dynamically and forever connected and never neglected, connected with the presence that is never an absence, and that we walk fully available to more good than we've ever imagined, now and forever manifesting dynamic health, well-being, 
and all of our needs being met. We feel it in our bones now, and we give thanks that we have returned, and we will return over and over and over again to anchor heaven on earth. And so it is. Amen. Peace and richest blessing.